Hello chess lovers, Soren here with another magnificent game. In 1930 in the Deutsche Schachzeitung, Alexander Elekain came across a game between two little known players in an insignificant event in Frankfurt am Main. This is not the sort of game you would expect the world champion to look at. However, he not only noticed it, he even analyzed it thoroughly and devoted a special article to it, under the heading A Gem of Combinative Art. The following game was played between F. Hermann and Hugo Husong in 1930. Now, let's see, how did this game manage to catch the eye of the world champion? Hermann opened up with e4 and Husong responded with e5. Knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5. We have the Ruy Lopez. a6, Morphy defense here. White is either moving back his bishop on a4 or is capturing on c6. This is the main moves, but in our game we have a rare bishop c4 move. This is like going for the Italian game, but. Already Belek has a pawn on a6 and in some lines this pawn on a6 can give Belek an extra tempo. Here comes knight f6, Belek is inviting white to go for knight g5 but white played d3. Bishop c5, bishop e3, knight d6. Belek is rejecting the offer of exchange of dark squared bishops in order not to allow white to open up the f-file. Later, this pawn on e3 could also allow white to establish a massive center. Here comes knight d2 and bishop e6. This time it's black who is offering the exchange of light squared bishops in order to recapture with the f pawn, open up the f file and try to organize an attack. But of course, all this black is doing in the cost of damaging his pawn structure. Here we first see the exchange of light squared bishops, after which white also went for the exchange of second pair of bishops. d takes c5, knight c4, instantly white is starting to target black's weaknesses, knight d7, a4, queen f6, c3, here we have castling by both sides, and rook d8. Now comes a5, knight d7, and queen b3. White Queen is looking for weaknesses on the Queen side, but Belek is not even paying attention to those threats and is playing Knight g6. Queen takes b7, and this time we have Knight f4. Already the threat is Knight takes g2, or also this pawn on d3 is hanging this way. White moved back his Knight on e1, and this time we have Queen g5. King h1, White is moving away his King from the dangerous g file and rook f6 no forces are joining the attack knight e3 white is for strengthening his king's side still is not paying attention to the hanging pawns rook f8 and only now we have queen takes c7 now comes rook f7 queen c8 check knight f8 black successfully managed to cover his king and already everything is ready for launching an attack queen takes c5 White is grabbing the third pawn, and this time we have queen h5 already. Black has created devastating threats. Overlooking Black's next threat, White played rook g1, which is losing on the spot. Instead of playing rook g1, it was better to play f3, and then if needed, White can play knight g4. But in our game we have rook g1, and as we have reached the critical position, please pause the video and try to find the winning combination for black. Ready? In here, Hugo Husong played queen takes h2 check. Look at this epic queen sacrifice. I'm sure you managed to find this queen sacrifice, but did you manage to calculate up to the checkmate? That's the question. Elekain gives this move to exclamation marks and writes. The two exclamation marks are not for the queen's sacrifice itself, the idea of which has become almost as conventional as for instance the popular bishop sacrifice on h7 or f7, but rather for seeing ahead to the study-like final by which the move is justified. To my knowledge, at least, contemporary chess practice can show no sacrifices leading directly to mate, which are similar to this one. 
I even consider this final worthy to be set beside the best achievements of that unsurpassed master of combination, Andersen. All I could do was to accept the queen sacrifice and now we have rook h6 check, black is unleashing a dangerous king hunt, king g3, this time we have knight e2 check, king g4 and rook f4 check, king g5 and rook h2. With this move black is threatening h6 checkmate, although playing rook ff6 or rook fh4 is winning faster, right now the threat is rook h5 checkmate and if g4 then knight takes g1 is coming followed by knight h3 checkmate or as I've already mentioned rook ff6 is also winning faster, the threat is rook g6 checkmate and if king g4 then Anyways, rook g6 check is coming, followed by knight g1 checkmate. A study like checkmate, right? But in our game we have rook h2. Understanding that the threat is h6 checkmate, white decided to give away his queen in order to remove the knight which was controlling this g6 square. King takes f8 was played and knight f3. h6 check, king g6 and king g8. Black king is taking under control this essential h7 square and now black is threatening rook f6 checkmate and at the same time this allows white to win the rook on h2 and already rook f6 can be met with king h5 but in here Hugo Hussong made a move which allowed him to checkmate white king in two moves. Can you find that move? Ready? He played rook f5, he's also sacrificing his rook. Look at this guys, black first sacrificed his queen and then double rooks. And by playing rook f5, right now the threat is rook g5 checkmate or knight f4 checkmate. Black freed the f4 square for the knight and white is unable to neutralize both threats. In here Hermann captured on f5 but got checkmate hit after knight f4. Look at this epic checkmate. First black sacrificed his queen and then two rooks and only with the last remaining piece managed to kill the enemy king. What a game. In the end as usual would like to ask you to solve a chess puzzle. Please take a look at this position and try to find the winning line for white. I will wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching, if you liked this game give the thumbs up, for more games consider subscribing to my channel, also press the bell button to get notified about new uploads, I will see you in my next video, take care.